Welcome to Lacrosse Link, Lacrosse Friends. I am Stephen Stamp, your host, and this is a very exciting episode. We have two terrific interviews that have been delayed a little bit. We're finally getting to them. Logistics in one case, weather in the other. But this week, I speak with David Soule, the head of the Canadian Lacrosse Hall of Fame and one of the people, one of the leaders behind the movement to relaunch Wampers Bible of Lacrosse Wamper. Larry Power, a good friend of mine, and uh, David Soul and the Hall of Fame have taken on the huge responsibility of relaunching Wampers Bible and it is launching in conjunction with the launch of this week's show. So for everyone who knows the Bible, so exciting for everyone who doesn't, you need to get to know. Wampers Bible of Lacrosse. All the deets are in the interview this week. Also, from down under, Rod Marr, who has been leading the charge for the development of a box in Altona North near Melbourne in Australia. It is huge to have this facility open and active. We had some weather issues a couple weeks ago when we were planning to do this, but it is underway. We've got video, we've got footage of them playing in Altona North. Very exciting stuff to grow the game in Australia and all of the Southern Hemisphere. So cool stuff this week. Of course, stick around for the rundown at the end of the show. I'm Stephen Stamp, your host. Thanks for being with us here on Lacrosse Link, your link to all things lacrosse. Beautiful play, Aaron Gray. He is having it himself a tournament. He made the save regardless of the crease call and that shows he is at his acrobatic level. In the middle, it just bounces off, but it's picked up and scores. Joining me on Lacrosse Link is Rod Marr, longtime Australian national team player, organizer, and now he helping to lead a huge project down in Altona North. Welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thanks for the uh, thanks for letting me uh, get on and um, talk about our um, our box down in Australia. You have been promoting this, the folks down there in Altona North, which is just outside of Melbourne, promoting it as something that has not existed in the Southern Hemisphere, a kind of a one of a kind thing right now. Just tell us about this project, about this box that you guys have built, how it came to be and, and what's so special about it. Well, look, it's been, a, it's been a long time coming. It's been something that's been, you know, in the pipeline for, I'm going to say over a decade, if not, if not longer, probably even probably 20 years, to be quite honest. Um, there was, a, a, we had one there previously that was just sort of put together by, um, you know, some, some guys that were, you know, really keen on the game back in the day. Um, and that sort of uh, got dilapidated and um, needed repair. So um, we sort of um, gone to council over several years trying to get funding and, and, and get the approval for it. And, um, you know, we, with everything, councils change every every few years, so you, you start the process again, and it sort of it went over and over a few different processes to the point where um, council really got on board and, and 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 wanted to get involved, and um, and and we were able to put it together over again, probably the last decade, where it's sort of they done a whole overview of the whole park there, and then we're able to in, include the box, um, and then yeah, in in the last two years, pretty much. Um, it, it's come to fruition and, and now we've had it open. Uh, we've, it's been open for about, say, 12 months, or, but obviously with COVID in Melbourne, we, we weren't able to do anything with it. So we've, we've only just really, we had our first game two weeks ago. So, And we were, we were planning to do this interview a couple of weeks ago to coincide with the official opening with the first games. And then the first weekend of games, Everything's cancelled because of rain, flash flooding, um, very Australia thing, right? To, you know, everything can kill you down there, I understand. So, um, but you, you're playing now. We've got some footage we're going to show of some of the games going on. And, and I mean, everybody I know is excited to get out and play in this box. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, again, been something that's been, you know, we've been talking about for some time and, and it's it's great now that we've got our own venue that we can now schedule our, our own times in there. So we never really had the, the, the flexibility before. We were only, we we're always governed by floor time wherever we were. Now, now we can sort of run our own race in that sense where, you know, we're going to have training sessions for the first time where before guys used to be, you'd be playing once a week and, and that was it. Now, you know, we've got allocated times for training. So I just, I just think that the level level of box lacrosse will, will definitely lift. There's no two ways about it. 
And the Australian national team, the men's team, has been a, uh, a, a very competitive club. Uh, certainly the 2015-2019 World Championships that I was at and calling your games, it's a lot of fun. There's some very good players. But as you said, the, the opportunity to raise the overall level just because the, the big thing is getting chances to play and to practice in real facilities is such a limiting factor, right? Yeah, definitely. And, and it has been over time, you know, where there's been times there, or, or even from the 70s right through to where we are now, they they, they played in, in indoor in, on timber floors inside factories, you know, then it was outdoor on tennis courts and you know, then for a while there, we played, they played on some Auntie car, like the tennis, the gravel, the gravel tennis courts as well. Yeah. Um, and then we moved into, we got, we actually got into a puck handlers, which was an inline hockey place there again, but we only ever got the times that they, they weren't using it. So it was really limited. Um, and then we played in some indoor, um, indoor cricket nets in netting, basically with no boards. So that was interesting as well. But again, anywhere we could play, you know, there's always the, the guys that are mad keen on box, um, you know, and, and it's, it's been good now. The fact that we've got our, our own venues is definitely going to see it go in leaps and bounds. And it's not just the, the men's national team. Obviously now with there being a women's world championship announced, I'm sure there'll be a team from Australia being put together. And we've talked, getting ready for this, about the, the boys and girls teams, the mix, the men's, the women's. So many people that are excited to use the box. How are things rolling in terms of getting folks out onto the floor? Yeah, look, it's been pretty good. Look, uh, coming out of, out of COVID, um, there's been, because we've been down, Melbourne, I'm not sure if you're aware, we were, we were locked down fairly severely for a long time. So as soon as the, as soon as we, the, the, the gates were open, it's, it's been a lacrosse um, crazy in regards to, and that's in every, in every version. Traditionally, this is probably your box season, you know, uh, the summer season for us. But um, just the fact that there's been a lack of, of lacrosse in general, it's, it's like it, it, we, they pulled the trigger and everything went go. So there's some field lacrosse, there's some sixes, there's, there's box going on, there's, there's stuff going on everywhere at the minute. So, and Altana has probably been a bit of a mecca for that. The fact that we've got the box there and we've got four, um, four fields as well, there's been, there's been a lot of lacrosse going on there, definitely for sure. And one of the things you mentioned, and I know this isn't going to happen overnight, but um, you guys look at something like the Alice Rebeski tournament in Radertine, which is a fantastic event, and the E-Box tournament that goes the week before, opportunity for, for national teams to get some experience and to get some games in. And I know you guys would love to be able to do something like that. And now it's so much, it's so much more possible with this facility. Definitely, 100%. So we're, we're earmarking that now for, we have the Melbourne Cup, obviously, I'm sure a lot of people hear about that. It's the, the horse race, the, the, the race that stops the nation, supposedly. It stops Melbourne anyway in its tracks, but um, that's generally the first Tuesday of November. So we're going to try and um, tag that in there for a four-day event. You know, it'll start off initially probably smaller, but it, and hopefully grow. So that, that's, that's when we're earmarking it for, and we're, we're hoping to have our first one next year. Nice. I would love to come down to that event and be uh, be part of it if you can. Uh, if we can swing it, um, that would be a lot of fun. And, sure, we'll try, um, we'll try and work something out. There's no two ways. Obviously, too, we've got the um, the Canadian um, uh, league as well. We've got the, the the team coming down. It's possibly probably not next year. I'm, I think they're in mark for the 2023 now. We look actually when COVID kicked in. That team was already, they'd already rallied and I think we're in Toronto, ready to get on a plane to come here. And it was, you know, that's how late it was that we pulled the pin on it. I think um, Canada had said, if you go, you got to come into quarantine when you come back. So, You know what happened? Because I was part of that group. I was coming to do those games and uh, with, the, with the Canadian club. And we were waiting and waiting. It was a couple of days till we were leaving. And then finally, the organizer, Chris Fox, just said, okay, we can't go, you know, quarantine. And when we would have left... Vancouver to fly to Melbourne. When our flight was leaving, things were okay. While we would have been in the air, um, Australia imposed their their protocols, and we would have landed at the air. We would have left Vancouver fine, landed in Melbourne into quarantine time, and we wouldn't have been able to leave the hotel. We would have just had to get back on our flight. It would have been insane. So thank goodness we didn't actually get on those flights. But uh, it was a late, it was a late call, but it was it was definitely the right move in the end. Don't you definitely the right call. We might have had some Canadians still living here.
<laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know. People might have just been like, ah, I'm not going anywhere. We'll just, we're in lockdown. We'll just stay. And I, I know people who wound up staying in Australia for quite a while um, with the lockdowns. And, you know, there are worse things than, than winding up in Australia for a while. No, definitely, definitely. The summer, the, we've just kicked in. Summer's just starting, or the weather's just starting to get better here now. We've got you know, 25, 26 today. Sun's out. So it's good. It's a bit different to where you are, I believe. It is. We're more in the 25, 26 Fahrenheit range at this point. So we're getting lots of snow. It's it's beautiful. I mean, it's it's pretty fun. We like winter here, but uh, um, I know my, my wife and I do anyway. Um, so that's the first time I've called her my wife on the show. Carrie and I got married a few weeks ago. So uh, um, that was pretty fun for me. <laughs> and uh, uh, really appreciate you coming on, Rod. Very excited uh, to see the footage, to see everything happening down there. It's it's just part of the explosion of the game around the world. And really appreciate your time. And, and we want to keep up, catch up, and have you back on for an update on how things are coming down the road. That'd be great. It'd be really good to, to catch up and, and, and let you know how we're traveling. Hi, this is Jaden with Al Anderson Source for Sports. Excited to tell you that we got all our new lacrosse product in for this upcoming season. Whether you're playing box or field, our lacrosse experts are going to make sure we get you into the right equipment to elevate your game. At Al Anderson Source for Sports, we know our stuff. Joining me on a lacrosse link, I'm very excited to have David Soule to talk about Wampers Bible of Lacrosse. It is the relaunch. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. This is a personal one for me. Wamper was a friend of mine. Uh, I saw him at tons of games. We traveled to games together, talked to him all the time. He's such a resource and such a great storyteller um, of the game of lacrosse. And when he was having trouble at the end, he thought he was having trouble with his computer and there was a GoFundMe was established to get him a new computer because he was saying his computer wasn't working and I actually wound up going and getting him that computer and delivering it to him and setting it up and that's when we realized that the problem wasn't really the computer he was having some dementia issues and uh, I had to get back to, to town I had to get back to work I arranged for someone to come the next day to help him more with the computer and that's when he had his fall um, down the stairs from the Gaylord Palace Lounge where he lived, which was, it's such a trove. It was such a trove of memorabilia. And uh, he, after that, had to go into a home. And that was kind of the, the beginning of the end um, for Wamper. And it, it was a very sad tale. But his legacy lives on in, with the Bible of the Cross in large part because of what you were doing, David. And I really want to hear about what's happening with the relaunch and how the functionality, the, the whole thing about, about what's happening with the Bible. That sounds great. I'd like to start out how I met, uh, if you will, uh, yes. Larry. And we'd exchanged emails uh, many times over several years, but it never really talked until uh, June of 2017. And I made the mistake, I guess, of telling them that I was a night owl and up till uh, two in the morning, uh, my time. And he took advantage of that. And I guess he never slept because I would get calls from him at one o'clock in the morning, my time. Uh, 4 a.m. your time, and we would talk for three hours. And uh, he explained to me that he was having trouble, uh, and he didn't know how much longer he could keep the uh, Bible going. So I looked for a solution. I said, well, one of the things we can do is we can start putting some of the stuff on our server and always point back to yours. And he said, I want something more. I, I want somebody that can take this on. Yeah. And uh, I took 10 steps back and said, <laughs> I may be crazy, but uh, I'm not you. And uh, um, he smiled. And uh, as anybody that knew him, he is a force of nature. Uh, and he persisted. And we talked through June, July, and half of August until I went on vacation. Uh, my last conversation with him, he said, uh, I think 2016 is probably the last year I'm going to be able to keep everything up to date if I can't find somebody to help. So I said to him, well, uh, this has to live on. Um, the, this, this is a treasure for all of the cross. Let's find a way to make it work. So I went off on my vacation, came back, and got silence, basically. And then I found out the news. So um, moving from there, um, he was in recovery. And I went to the uh, board of the uh, Hall of Fame. I was a member of the board of directors at the time and said, we have to do something. Collectively, we have to do something. And when I was able to contact uh, Larry again, he asked me, 
will you take this over? And I made a pledge, Larry, it won't die with you. And, um, you know, I, I, still, I shake, I don't know whether you just saw me shiver um, when he said, I'm counting on you, yeah. make it happen. After that, I found out about the efforts that you and others had been the GoFundMe page, the computer. When he was well enough, um, the Hall of Fame um, graciously said, yes, this is your baby, pick it up, do what you have to do. So I flew back and I spent a large part of four days uh, up in the uh, lake area uh, where he was convalescing at the time and talking to him. I repeated my pledge and he said, uh, can, can you keep the Bible going? In the interim, the Bible had actually disappeared from the web. Um, I don't know how many people know that, but I kept on going on to see what I was going to be getting into. And uh, the uh, uh, hosting had uh, fallen off because he hadn't been paying the credit bills. Yeah. So uh, as you said, there was trouble communicating with Larry. I phoned up the host company and said, you don't know me. That site has to remain. Here's my credit card. Just keep billing me. Yeah. And uh, that goes on to this day. But in the process, we, I discovered that uh, the uh, profiles, the, the main thing uh, on the, the Bible uh, had been lost from the letter uh, P on through the end of the alphabet. Right. So after I signed a pledge to Larry, um, put it in writing to him that we would do it and came back, it's taken almost two years to uh, a backfill and get it back to where it was. So I think, you know, there was probably 4,000 profiles of every player. Yeah. And I remember going and seeing that it stopped it. I believe it was Drew Petkoff was where it stopped. Yeah. I, I checked many times, like so many people did. Um, the good news is, is that uh, uh, we've managed to go back and uh, reconstruct all of it through 216. I'm working with Doug Louis and Paul Del Monte um, out in the West uh, to bring it up to date. Mm -hmm. um, to keep it up to date on the juniors, I'm going to ask for help for, from your audience. But firmly committed to doing it, we decided that had just keeping it in a steady state wouldn't honor the commitment I'd made to Larry. It had to grow. So we're making it in the Hall of Fame uh, with the relaunch. It's the start of our full archive. Everything we have in the Hall of Fame in a print or digital a photograph a program will be on that site. So what we inherited from him was probably about 5,000 records. Uh, it's about uh, just over 10,000 records um, now. Uh, that's probably optimistically speaking, I try to fool myself by making the job smaller. That's probably 20% of the job done. Um, but we're also building a database. Uh, we're taking um, his profiles and everyone, uh, we're putting a line item in for every player year record. And what that will be able to do, you can see the rudiments now with, uh, with the Western Lacrosse Association. I started with that because I had that in Excel format. But you'll be able to go in, uh, type in your favorite player, whether it be Gaylord or, or uh, John Davis or whoever, mm -hmm. and it'll bring up uh, their complete record. But you can pick any year, click on a button, and it will tell you what all his teammates did in that year. Or you can click on and see how everybody in the league that did that year. And that is basically, I know that was Wamper's dream, was to have that become, because it was a great resource, but not easily searchable. It was it was challenging, because uh, it was a huge text file. I know, I, I, I helped him deal with it. It was, it was massive. Start, when I started off, Stephen, it was a 6,000 page long, single word document yeah <laughs> i i you're doing god's work honestly it's uh, I, I and so many people are so appreciative and now it's launching it's it's ready it's to roll what's the uh, and you're actually launching it in connection with uh with appearing here on the show we really appreciate that because you and i have been talking about this for quite a while and yes, uh, yes. i'm just so excited that it's ready to roll where where do people get to it and what's it going to be how do they do it Okay, um, there's a difficult way and the easy way. Okay. Um, I felt we had to honor, obviously, uh, uh, Larry. And so the full name is, all I've changed is the, from a .com to a .ca. So wamps.bibleoflacrosse.ca will get you there. Um, but also wamps.ca or wamper.ca will get you to the same place. 
So those we'll are the ones that I put those up on the screen so people can uh, and put them in the description so people can get to those links. And if I just, before I forget it, I'll tell you about the search. One of the things we've done is that search uh, encompasses everything we have. So if you do a search on uh, a, a Gaylord Palace, uh, it will bring up every record we have of them, every picture we have on site, any stories we've got on site, and you can just click and go directly there. If it's on somebody else's site that we don't have the right to keep it on, there's a link. So for example, uh, everybody that's in the Ontario Lacrosse Hall of Fame, there's a link on our site that will, if you do a search by their name, you'll find it. You can go find the scoop on them. Wow, we are actually already running out of time. I mean, there's just so much going on. It's just so exciting. Uh, to me, this is a, a huge moment for the sport of lacrosse in Canada and around the world. And, um, I want to pass on my thanks to you and everyone who's involved. I know you're not doing this on your own and you're very quick to point out there's a bunch of people helping you with this. Um, but thank you to you and to everyone who's doing it. And we're going to have to have you back and, and update. Just uh, let us know how things are going. But for now, the Bible lives again. It does. And I am so proud uh, that uh, we're able to do that for Larry. He deserves no less. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll definitely have you back and, and update. And, and everyone, go to the Bible. If you haven't been to it before, you're in for a treat. If you have been, you're in for even more of a treat because it is going to be so much more functional and, and just having it again. It's, I don't think it, it's possible to overstate how important this is. Thanks so much, Stephen. lacrosse friends thanks for being with us for the interviews i think really exciting and fun stuff with both david soul and the relaunch of wampers bible of lacrosse and rod Marr and the launch of the box in altona north near melbourne in australia that is a huge deal for lacrosse down under and now we are to the rundown where we look at news from around the world of lacrosse and of course the big news this week the national lacrosse league getting underway. The season launches Friday night with the Vancouver Warriors visiting the San Diego Seals at Pachanga Arena in San Diego. And then Saturday night, everybody else plays. All 14 teams in action on opening weekend. All the games in Canada on TSN television or tsn.ca or the TSN Direct app through ESPN in the United States and around the world. I do strongly recommend going to TSN or going to ESPN and making sure you know how it works. Just familiarize yourself with logging in. You don't want to be doing it in a hurry as games are getting rolling. That is a recipe for frustration. So I would suggest go to the app, go to the tsn.ca, TSN Direct, uh, ESPN, Make sure you know how it works and you're uh, ready to roll so you can watch all the exciting National Lacrosse League action. Now, rosters are being announced as we're recording. Uh, they were due at noon on Monday, November the 29th. Uh, we're recording Monday evening, so we uh, don't have all the rosters available. I'm not going to dive into a lot of surprises or how rosters are constructed at this point. That will all be fodder for future shows. We'll get into that on Laxbeat. Make sure you do check out the Laxbeat podcast. Lots of coverage of the NLL and so much more in the world of lacrosse wherever you get Get your podcasts and uh, we will also have lots of coverage on IL Indoor, my, uh, my other gig, so make sure you're checking out all the coverage, the best of lacrosse coverage, box lacrosse coverage on IL Indoor. And there's more of the box lacrosse happening this weekend 
It is not in North America, but it is the top league outside of this continent. The National Box Lacrosse League run in the Czech Republic, centered out of Radertin, the uh, fa fabulous venue, outdoor venue where the Alice Trubesky Memorial and the Frank Menschner Cup are all played. And that and the MBLL has its semis and finals this weekend. You can watch all the games, they're being streamed. Uh, check out a story from Brian Whitmer about the tournament, about the, the playoffs and the championships for the MBLL on IL Indoor. And of course, you can go, it will have links for how you can watch the games. You can check out all the stats. Some great players, I mean, Dominic Peshik, um, some terrific, terrific players, uh, the Bratislava Bats taking part in that league. There's, it's becoming a more international league around Europe, but some really, really good box lacrosse that you can check out and get yourself ready to roll for the launch of the National Lacrosse League. The games, of course, being six hours ahead of Eastern time in the Czech Republic, will give you a chance to watch some games during the day or in the morning in the East or in the Pacific time, even earlier, of course, and get yourself all revved up and ready to go for the National Lacrosse League season as well. Uh, the World U15 and U17 Championship was held recently in Messina, New York. I was down calling the play-by-play -play for the medal games, the semis and the finals. Very cool stuff going on. Some big developments there. First of all, the Haudenosaunee wins both gold medals in the U15 and U17. It's a big breakthrough for them winning gold medals, beating Canada in the one and the U.S. in the other. And that is another big story as the U.S. reached a gold medal, a championship game for the first time in an international box lacrosse championship. And they had to beat Canada in the semis of the U15s to do that. Um, a lot of promise showing for the U.S. teams are there. A lot of really good stuff happening with that U.S. program. Um, and of course, the Haudenosaunee, lots of talent. And the cool thing, I think, for the Haudenosaunee in this tournament was a lot of talent on the defensive end. The uh, offense has really been the strong point of most Haudenosaunee national teams. And the defense was a real strength for these U15 and U17 clubs, and that is huge. Um, a lot of the, the Haudenosaunee coaches talking about that, about the goaltending defense being a big development for them. Um, Canadian Cross League combines have been announced. So there are seven regional combines across Canada for players who want to be part of the team that Canada will put together for next year's 2022 World Juniors in Winnipeg once again. It will be a very different tournament. This year, of course, it was very exciting to have it on TSN. We brought lacrosse back to TSN and the Canada West, Canada East series was the was on display because it just didn't work out with the pandemic with a lot of issues for other nations to be there next year there'll be at least a half dozen other nations taking part it is going to be a huge event in winnipeg very excited about that one and if you want to be part of the canadian team put together for that get to the CLL website, check out the combines, be a part of that process, and uh, lots of very cool stuff happening. More information will be coming out about that soon. And finally, remember, reach out to us here at Lacrosse Link. You can reach me on Twitter, at Stamp Lacks. We always are interested in hearing from you, hearing if there's something you would like us to cover, if there's a really interesting story. I think this of the, the launch of the Bible of Lacrosse, the relaunch, um, very cool, the box, being opened in Altona North outside of Melbourne in Australia, I think are just really cool stories, the kind of stuff we love to bring you. Talking about the, you know, the Czech League, talking about obviously lots of National Lacrosse League stuff, but anything that you are, that is really interesting that you'd love to share with us, we would love to hear it. So reach me again at Stamplax on Twitter, um, hit us up, there's contact info on the Lacrosse Link website. Thank you so much, Lacrosse Friends, for being with us here on LAX Sports Network and on the YouTube page, wherever you're getting your lacrosse link, you are getting everything from the world of lacrosse. Make sure you register, ring the bell, subscribe, get your friends to know, share the word about lacrosse link here on LSN. Great to have you with us. We'll see you next week.